From a reporting side of things, which is what I'm going to do next to be able to bring that into our um, PowerPoint solution that we were talking about, is I'm going to go ahead and create a new report instead of a dashboard. So the report that I'm going to create now is, again, I'm just going to work with a blank template this time. And what I'm going to do is you'll notice that I have the plus sign that's right in the center of the screen. So that means that I need to click. So if I click on there, I'm going to see my different options. I could do from a list to a cross tab to a visualization. So I have a variety of things that I can do. But in this particular case, I'm going to choose a specific cross tab. So I click on the cross tab and I'm just going to click on the defaults that are there. And just like before, it's going to ask me to select a source. So I'm going to select the package that I want. So I'm going to go to where my packages are. And I'm going to pick the one that I've created specifically for SAP Business One. And I click on Open. Now I'm going to shift myself now out of page design mode and go into preview mode. And the reason why I'm going to do that is so that as I'm bringing things onto the canvas, the information shows up in real time. So I'm going to open up the order book. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open up the calendar area and open up calendar, and I see I've got calendar year. I'm gonna go ahead and take calendar year and bring it right onto the canvas. So you can see my years that are showing up automatically. Now, what I'm gonna do is I wanna filter for a specific year in this particular case, so I'm gonna right click on calendar year, and I'm gonna say filter for report. So it's just me clicking on the specific field that I want, and I wanna do a filter. So I click on filter for report, and it's gonna show me all of my options available. In this particular case, we only wanted 2017. And what I want to do is every time I run this report, I want to make sure that it asks me which year do I want. So I'm just going to check off the prompt for values when the report is run. And I'm just going to click on OK. So now you're going to see only 2017 in your cross tab. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go where my measures are. And that's inside of sales credits. And I've got my line key figures. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to take net sales and gross profit and I'm going to just go ahead and drag the two and just nest it right underneath 2017. So now I've got those two measures that are there, but I want to do a little bit more than just have that. By looking at those measures, I want to be able to have a percentage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do a calculation by clicking on gross profit and then control clicking net sales. And notice that there's a calculation menu that becomes available. So if I put my mouse where it says insert calculation that looks like a little calculator, I have the ability to say, I want gross profit over, notes, over net sales. I click on that. And notice how it's context sensitive. So based on what you're selecting, it's actually showing you your different calculations that you have available to you, as well as you have the ability to do a custom one if the one that you want is not showing. So it's telling me right now, of the 7 million, I'm doing 34% gross profit. What I'm going to do first and foremost is I'm going to take this measure that's right over here. I'm just going to move it over to the end so it's at the end. And right now, I'm also going to change the name because I don't like the name that's there. So I can just double click on the actual name and say, you know what, I'm just going to remove some of the spacing here. I'm just going to call this right now, uh, I'm going to call this percent gross profit. And I click on OK. And there's my gross profit. So the next thing that I want to do is be able to add some context as it relates to the salespeople. So if I go ahead and minimize the stuff that we have in sales credits, I'm going to go into customers. And inside of customers and bill to, I have information that's related to what I call the bill to salesperson. So this is the salesperson that's related to the specific customer master. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the salesperson and just drag and drop it where the rows are. And now I can see a breakdown of all my different sales reps for 2017 for net sales and gross profit and so forth. But what I want to do is I want to take it even further. I want to filter it again for a specific salesperson. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the salesperson, say filter for the report. And this time I'm just going to filter it for ASS agency. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say prompt every time this runs as well, similarly to what I did for when I did it for the calendar year. And I'm going to click on OK. So now you notice that I have just for AFS agency for 428,000 and 181,000 of gross profit. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my item master 
where I have all my information on item and I'm going to take the item family and I'm just going to nest that right next to AFS agency. By doing that, I'm now seeing the breakdown of that amount that we were talking about before for AFS agency by item family. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish it off with putting in a little bit of a total by clicking on AFS agency. And you'll notice that there's a summarize icon right here. I click on summarize. I say, just give me a default summary. And it's going to give me that total for AFS agency of 828,000 in total net sales with a gross profit of 358. The next thing that I want to do is now that I have this in my report, I now have the ability to run this report by saying, do I want to run this in HTML, which is on screen, in PDF, because I want to print, or do I want to export it to Excel? But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it in HTML. And to show you that the prompts that we put in for the year and for the salesman are going to show up on the report. So I could say, I still want it for 2017, but instead of for AFS agency, I want to run it for Chris G. I click on Chris G. I click on OK. And that exact same report that we saw before is now showing up specifically for Chris G for 2017. So that's what I wanted to show you from a report. Now, what I'm going to do is now that I have this report in play, I've got this report that I've created, I'm going to make sure that I've saved this report. So I'm going to do File, Save As, and I'm going to put it in my little area that I have here for my content. And I have a report that I've already created, but I'm just going to replace the one that's there, Sales Report by Item Family by Salesperson. And I'm just going to replace the one that I've actually created. So it already existed, but I'm replacing it now. Now I've got that report. So now I'm going to show you how I take this report and have it integrated with the prompts inside of PowerPoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click now on PowerPoint, opening up my PowerPoint sheet, and you can see that I've got a template that's already there available for me to work with. And what I want to show you right now is how we integrate things. So the first thing that I'm going to do is you're going to see that I've got a little header page that's going on. I've got another page too that's an integrated report coming from Cognos directly into PowerPoint. But now what I want to do is I'm going to show you how to integrate one of the reports that we just created and bring it directly into here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a new slide. And you'll notice in the top right hand corner, you're going to see, you're going to see in the top right hand corner, you're going to see an IBM folder. Now, that folder that's there is basically allowing me to connect to Cognos. So I'm going to say connect to the Cognos environment. And once I'm connected, I'm able to work with the Cognos for Microsoft Office. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to bring in my area of my reports that are coming from the Cognos environment. The IBM folder, we are going to connect to the Cognos platform. Again, it's going to ask me for my user ID and password. And once we are connected into the environment, we do have access to the portal, to the My Folders. There's that report. And we'll import the content. And there we go. So now you can see that we have that report making available. I'll click on Next and click on Finish. And the report is going to come in with the prompts that it's asked for. So you're going to see now, for example, I'm going to choose AFS agency. And I'm going to go ahead and pick a specific year, in this case, 2017. And I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And the information shows up directly inside of your PowerPoint presentation. Now, looking at that, if I don't touch anything and I, I can refresh all the data, it'll automatically refresh the information that's on screen. However, I do have some settings that are available by looking at the prompt method. You can see right now it says do not update because that do not update means don't update the prompt values. So every time I click on refresh, just refresh the information that you're seeing on screen. In this particular case, I don't want to have a refresh, but if I did, I could go ahead and change that by just clicking on the do not update and switching that over to a prompt page. Now, just to point out, you also have the salesperson that we selected before, which was AFS agency, and we also selected 
the value for the year. And that's coming inside of these parameters. However, now that I've set it to prompt page, when I go ahead and click refresh all data, I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And now it's going to ask me for the prompt again. So instead of choosing AFS agency, I'm gonna include Chris G and I'm gonna still keep it for 2017. I click on okay. And the information that we're looking at for AFS agency is now gone, and now it's showing up just for Chris G. So to summarize, when you're working with the information that's coming from the PowerPoint integration, you can have these things in such a way that you can have a series of reports that are loaded inside of your PowerPoint presentation that's going to allow you to work with the tool and again, you're not limited to how many reports that you can include in there, but again, you'll be able to refresh that rather than having to um, have a series of other reports going for you in play. And it gives you that nice PowerPoint presentation that you can then run and start adding commentary and so forth as you see fit. Okay.